Equine Grass Sickness Fund is only 30 years um, in existence, but as a disease it was only recognised a bit earlier than that as a distinct um, disease. But it has been hugely frustrating and because I'm sure that they thought that they were going to have a better grip of it, um, both its cause and treatment, than they actually have. Not all scientific mysteries are solved so quickly. One of the earliest priorities for research identified by the pioneers of the modern was equine grass sickness. It's a disease that's still being researched a hundred years later. Back in the 1920s, I think uh, obviously horses were very important on farms for traction power and the grass sickness was identified quite early on as a major issue because it killed horses so quickly. And I think it was actually one of the drivers that uh, made tractors become on farms a bit more quickly because they were losing so many horses to grass sickness. It was a major priority for the farmers to try and find out what was causing the disease and whether they could get something, a solution to tackle it. Early days, what they were looking at was whether or not there was some toxin involved. Um, obviously, it's called grass sickness because it's connected to when the horses went out to grass, usually in the sort of spring or summer. And they thought perhaps it was something that the horses were eating um, on the pasture. The Queen's Balmoral Estate is home to an award-winning stable of Highland ponies. They're looked after by Sylvia Ormiston. I believe there's an unbroken line of Highland ponies since Queen Victoria times. The ponies are actually a very special part of the Queen's life here. However, they're a very essential part, being a working harness pony, hence this equipment that we're putting on board, to um, bring home the, the culled red deer. The controlled cull of the red deer has to be managed um, in the deer forest, and the ponies are the equipment to carry the beast off the hill. When the Queen comes up for the summer, um, one of the first things she likes to do is come and meet the new foals uh, that she hasn't met yet this particular year. And then when she's here for the duration, she likes to come and visit with friends and guests, etc., to come and visit the ponies. They're a big part of Balmoral. This much-loved stable of ponies has recently been afflicted by grass sickness, twice in a single year. We had Balmoral Lord born here. Uh, we lost him as a four-year-old. He was here for, I would say, a good time, not a long time. You know, he has left his already his legacy. He was a very, very lovely, loving young man, and he had all what we were really looking for, temperament, confirmation, etc. However, boom, it's gone. Hercules uh, was like Lord, he was in the process of being with his ladies at the time, it was during serving season for us. Um, he was in a field on his own with his mares over the fence from him and he was no bother at all, he was just going through his day-to-day -day motions. Uh, but because we were having a visit on the Friday from Her Majesty, um, he came in on the Thursday to have his shower and his prep and stuff like that and it was from then that we started to notice things weren't right. Um, so on the Friday when Her Majesty came to visit, we were already at that stage where we were keeping him comfortable until Her Majesty got to say goodbye, basically. I think so many people are involved and trying their very best, coming in from all angles, but it's like cancer. It's, it attacks you from all angles. There is, I would say, a perfect storm you could have 11 ponies in a field and only one pony be affected. And why was that? Why did it only affect that one pony? Funding is what it's all about. We can't do it. We can't research without the money. However, the research needs to go down the right channels. This is where the interdisciplinary research, I think, could really help. 
One of the new initiatives that's happening with the Grass Sickness Fund this year, which is quite exciting, is they've launched a new fund uh, named after John Gilmore, who was the veterinary pathologist at Morden, who really championed research into this area. And the idea is that it will encourage younger people, maybe with new ideas, some innovation, to take out short um, scientific projects to try and look at what might be causing grass sickness and what we can do about it.